we have a great study that shows a 6.54% increase in fuel economy. What makes this unique is that this is an, an indisputable test. And the reason is, it was run on two trucks that belonged to Ford Motor Company in Michigan. And Ford was looking for, they said, well, we're trying to find something to get about a 1% increase in fuel economy, uh, you know, talking to this sales, one of the salespeople, the Amsoil person, and they said, well, I'll tell you what, what about you give us the two trucks and we'll run the ASTM test. The ASTM test for checking fuel economy comparisons using our Amsoil versus a high quality petroleum. They said, well, okay, uh, we'll support that with the trucks, you know. And so these guys weren't real quick to get involved, but let me be clear, they did support it. They got the two trucks, they put them in action, and these trucks had to be set up in this test where they weighed very close, very close. We're talking about a pound or two of the same weight, the two trucks. The trailers they pulled had to weigh within a couple pounds of the same, each trailer. The tires had to have equalized pressure before they could make the run. Everything about this was according to the ASTM test as close as they could make them to the same, but that wasn't quite enough. Because in this cockamamie test, the way it works, oh, this way. come on, get over there. You got the red out of the way. There we go. Okay, now you'll love this as, as a former professor, Chuck. This thing, it would take me a little while to explain this thing to you because when I finished explaining it to you, I would already be mad, okay? Because <laughs> being an old engineer, they don't like the way this is done. It doesn't have, to me, clarity and ease of understanding that would be good to use in a fairly non-technical aspect for people. And the reason is, when you look at this, okay, we've got two trucks right here the control vehicle and the test vehicle. They don't change. Down here, two trucks, the control vehicle and the test vehicle. Now to me, to have made this look easy, in the second test, <laughs> I would have had, you know, these two trucks, the test vehicles side by side, so I could see how one did at the beginning and how one did later. No, no. This is that same truck there down here, and this same truck here down here, okay? So when you look at these two and you're trying to, you think this is the results, no, that's not really the results. That's going to set up the comparison of what it calls the TC ratios, which is the test to the control truck ratio, test to control truck ratio, then you have to go through a, a formula so you come out with the test. Okay, all right, I understand that. They're trying to eliminate all of the possible unexpected variables you could get while driving on this 40 mile control circuit because the wind could be different on one run, that kind of thing. The guy driving could be a little different, you know, different kind of thing. So they're, they're trying their best to set up a system that would eliminate all of that. Now, what they do is they decide then that in order to be a usable test run, you have to have a, a limited amount of difference. See, it says two percentage points. Well, this one, this one, and this one don't vary by more than two percent. Meaning that on that run, probably things were pretty consistent because the truck got the same fuel economy, okay? On these three runs, it didn't vary as much. See, 5.6, 5.5, and 5.5, they all are pretty close together. So that's how it, they did this test. Now, in the end, it works out 6.54% better fuel economy and the reason why I even suggest that you look at this test as something that you can use in your marketing is because it really cannot be refuted by people who go, well, I don't know, you can cook the books, you can go any test you want. No, I wouldn't even done the test this way. But the ASTM sets forth a fuel test using this procedure. They followed it to the letter. They did it like it was supposed to. It was actually done for Ford Motor Company. I mean, a big organization, not for, you know, Johnny Podunk. Okay, so the big company's going in looking, that. Ah, can you show us a 1% increase? They said, well, yeah, we'll run a test. They said, okay, if you're gonna run a test, you have to use the ASTM test. You can't use anything that Anvil invented. Okay, we'll use the ASTM test. They go through this thing, and if you 
look at the data. Let's go back to that for just a second. Okay. What they run in this truck in the oil is they're using shell, not shell, sorry, Texaco high quality petroleum engine oil, uh, transmission oil, and gear rig. It's good stuff. It's, a, it's not a cheap product. It's a very good petroleum product. Okay? That's what they're running in the control to find out what they get for fuel economy. They come back in and replace that with the Amsoil 5W40 and with the Amsoil, um, what's it called, 500,000 mile gear lube, the truck gear lube, okay, and then with a 50 weight transmission oil, uh, one of the power shifts or the new uh, 500,000 mile transmission oil, okay. That's all they do. They put that in, they run the test exactly like it's called for, and not 1%, but 6.54% increase in fuel economy. So my point on that is, is that if you ever needed an absolute irrefutable hammer, if you're going to talk to somebody who has a fleet of diesel trucks of some type, you just say, well, I don't know, and today it's a pretty expensive world, but if you, all you got to do is change lubricants and get over 6% increase in fuel economy, if you take diesel being uh, $4 a gallon, that's 24 cents a gallon reduction in your cost of diesel. So we're talking about if you take 6%, you got a fairly large trucking company, maybe they have 100 trucks. And those 100 trucks drive sometimes, Randy, 100,000 miles a year in a big company, or 50,000, or 100,000 miles. And, and I just looking at a, at a standard big truck, it might get, what, seven or eight miles per gallon? Seven. Seven. <laughs> so let's just say they went 70,000 miles and got seven miles per gallon, right? Okay, that's 10,000 gallons of diesel. So if I take 10,000 gallons of diesel and I save 6%, if I can even do the numbers, what is that, 600 bucks? Per vehicle. Per vehicle, I have 100 vehicles. It's about $60,000, okay? Just changing to a different lubricant. So these are real numbers, they cannot be disputed. This is not something that we ran in one of the quote uh, where we had a New York taxi cab fleet run this test, you know, and you did it. No, this is a test that was run on somebody else's vehicles using an ASTM test that was developed. That, quite frankly, I'm not sure I would even agree with the test, but it, it is their test. It's accepted as the standard, and it turned out this way. There were some shocked people at the Ford place. They were shocked at the results. They were looking for 1% improvement and didn't believe you could possibly get more than 2% out of change of lubricant. So that's a significant change. It's worth knowing. I'm sure Amazon will have that report with a G number that you'll be able to order just that reprinted report as a handout. And it's very powerful. So if you can get in front of anybody that's got some trucks, that's always a hard part, getting in front of them so that you can talk to them and actually get to the person that can make the decision, you might be able to make some headway with that report. We can redo that uh, table if you like and, and put it so that it shows the results. Without yeah, we'd have to look at it. I, uh, I asked the guy at Amsoil, and a uh, good guy, but I asked him and he said he didn't actually know where they came up with it. So this, this report will replace the 8.2%? No, it's just going to be an added one, I think. I think you got to get there again. Got to kick it faster. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Being they ran that test with Ford, whose synthetic oil does Ford use? They weren't using anybody's. Well, they Ford had synthetic was, oil. Well, in their, uh, in their production automobiles they do, but not in these big 18-wheelers, which was, oh. what these guys were, were trucks that haul on a standard route for the old idea they have now in manufacturing. These trucks go down to a place and pick up parts mm -hmm. every day and bring them over to the assembly thing. So they're just going back and forth on this 40-mile this oh. course where they go over to one place, they load them up with all the parts, they come over to this place, forklifts take it all off, and they're manufacturing vehicles here, but over there they're just making the parts. So these guys were running a set, set route, and the idea came up with, well, you know, would you like to save some money on that? And they said, yeah, we, if you can get us a lubricant that saved 1%, that'd be good. So they set out hoping to get 1%, and they got 6.54. So 
Needless to say, there's an Amsoil dealer in Michigan <laughs> that is on top of something really big because if he makes this thing work, he may be inside the Ford Motor Company, not for their production cars, but for wherever they have these truck fleets moving stuff around, he may be right on top of it. So yeah, we'll it? know when we see him arrive at the next Amsoil <laughs> convention in a, a, in a 60 <laughs> foot uh, motor home, you know, one of those million dollar jobs that uh, it went uh, big. Some of those lubes, like these we're talking about in Texaco, would be more expensive, much more expensive than they used to be. In other words, we used to be five or six times the expense. We're usually running out about two times the cost of most of these lubricants. So it's surprising. Why have an extended drive? Oh, it does. And see, we're not even, this does not even consider that you could run this oil three or four times as long as the other oil without even changing it and get this increase in fuel economy. This was just a fuel economy test. If we want to back up and say, well, if you put five gallons of oil in the transmission and five gallons in the differential and then you put another uh, 10 gallons in the engine and you bought the amp oil, how much did it cost you versus the uh, the Texaco oil, what you'd say is, well, uh, we could run it at least three times as long with this fuel economy increase and not pay as much for it running it three times as long as it paid for the Texaco. So why don't I sell you an oil that will cost you less and save you 6.54% in fuel economy? It's Labor, just the, the, time, the downtime and the everything. Yeah. So we just need to try to get in front of some of these. Uh, you know, Amsoil has encouraged us to look into the small to moderate fleets. Guys got 20 uh, trucks hauling vegetables. Guys got 20 trucks hauling ferns out of Florida, out to you know different places around the country, from a pop and you know all that uh, uh, beautiful flower growth, all that stuff they have. Well, they have a lot of times truckers that come in and pick that up. Some of them have their own trucks. So it's up to us to try to get out and find those fleets. I would not purposely encourage you or really discourage you from trying to sign up the thousand truck fleet. But what I would tell you is that you're starting to talk about degree of difficulty. And that degree of difficulty a lot of times includes whether the mobile sales rep that's going there has the Super Bowl tickets that you don't have. Okay, so, but the smaller fleets, the guys that are at the 15, 20 trucks, those kind of things. They're usually owner operated. In other words, it's an owner of those. Those guys are usually interested in saving money because it's their money. It's not somebody else's money. They own the small company. They want to save money.